I had the ceramics teacher. Oh, she was so cool. Yeah. She was like a hippie. You know, she had these big like, like butterfly glasses with like the purple fade and stuff. <laughs> she was so cool, but I liked her. But she made me like want to like do like art, like do ceramics. And yeah. she's like talking and she's like this, like she was like from like, you know, like New York or something. You know, yeah. you'd think she was from New York, the way she behaved. I didn't graduate junior high even. You know, I got to the point where like they just said like, well, just you have to go to high school now, but you're you don't get like the celebration, or <laughs> you don't get like you know certificates. Yeah. I didn't graduate junior high even, so then I'm in high school, and I mean I would ditch nonstop. I, just, I had a reading problem. I had like a a disciplinary problem. You know, I always wanted to make fun of the teacher. Yeah. You know, I wanted to like clown on the teacher, or say like you know whether it was a girl or a boy. You know, I'd make fun of them. You know, I would just cause trouble, flick things. <laughs> I mean, you can't go around flicking yeah. things like, when you're, you know, when you're already like, you're 15 years old. I mean, flicking things. I mean, you think that you would know not to. to that's like, you know, really junior high stuff. But I mean, for me, it was still funny. I started reading probably. I don't know. I don't really like Stacy Peralta that much. You know, the guy. Yeah. But he told me he goes, uh, he goes, this is a classic. You gotta read this. This is what he goes. This is a book you're gonna want to read. This is what you're gonna want. And I was like, dude, I don't give a shit about fucking. <laughs> Are you yeah. some kind of idiot, <laughs> or whatever? You know, uh, the way I used to be. And then he was talking about uh, the Catcher in the Rye book. Oh, okay. You know, he goes, get this book. You know. You, you guys, you skateboarders are young, you're traveling and stuff, you want to read books, man, you ought to. <laughs> this is the way he would that's, talk. That's what he sounds, too. Yeah, that's the way he would yeah. talk. And so he was saying, like, after I was sort of complete, finished with blind skateboards, yeah. then I read Catcher in the Rye. And it was really nice, because when I read Catcher in the Rye, I was living in uh, New Brunswick, New Jersey. So I could come into New York and like be at the places where, <laughs> where the guy, the character Caulfield was. <laughs> And it was bitching, you know. I mean, I was probably like 24 or 25. And I went to a community college and I took art classes. That was trippy. I mean, I, I was there like, I mean, you know, talk about like being like a, a derelict or, you know, like a, a punk. And then uh, I went into the art class and like then there was like a nude model. I was just like, <laughs> you know, because I, I was like, this is cool. Like, you know what I mean? Her slightest movements, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Ooh, maybe she's moving like that for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. I've been doing like a, a, a various array of like things that are like artistic. You know? I, I've been really into uh, using my iPad as a touch program where you can like draw. Like, uh, iPad Doodle or um, Doodle Buddy or Photo Doodle and and uh, Gmail also has like uh, when you're hooked up to Gmail on an iPad or an iPhone it gives you the option to attach a photo and then it also gives you to do a squiggle or a doodle okay. so with that with the Gmail doodle you can have like a spray brush it's really fun so I do that a lot and I do uh, have been making these banana shanks that are like uh, they're like a weapon, you know, like they're like a part of a banana, but yeah. then the tip of the banana comes a blade. So it's like a fake banana, <laughs> but with a real blade. Yeah. But they're not f real. I mean, I'm, they're, they're just artworks. Yeah, yeah. But um, I mean, the concept is real. Yeah. And uh, so I make those. I've been making those. And I'm getting ready for an art show in, uh, in Kansas City at, at this uh, s place called The Escapist. It's like a big skateboard like gallery and like a lot of skaters they have a really big skate community it's really fun my son he's not so much into skateboarding standing up but he really likes to uh you know to get into these little city racers that we make i had this like long narrow table that i had to like uh take from my house like downtown to like uh, uh to like on the edge of soho yeah. so i just put this thing this big uh like kind of a table, but it's long and narrow on top of the skateboard. But the skateboard that I had to put it on was like a, a huge, uh, a huge board called uh, Kingfish by Bulldog Skateboards. And so I had it on there, and I'm pushing my son on it, yeah. and he's sitting in the middle like this, you know. And it's got four <laughs> points on each corner, you know. It's long yeah. and narrow, and like, you know, it was. I don't know how late it was, but there was just there wasn't very 
much foot traffic because you know it's down in that area you know from the you know kind of sort of financial area you go to this side of canal and it's not so uh busy after like uh eight o'clock you know everybody's already left yeah so the people that were out were like kind of like bums or just people <laughs> like you know like <laughs> transits or just people like this and they would see him and they would be like like they thought he was like a little king in this little chariot and i'm pushing him so we get that to uh to where we have to drop it off and mm. it's the guy curtis this the artist the love me guy so yeah. we dropped the table off at his house and then we're leaving and i said oh i'm sorry we don't have the we don't have a car anymore for you yeah. to get into like you know like a little type of and william was like it's okay like he was like positive he's like it's all right and then uh, we walked by the parking garage and i go look i go look at that and there's this point like it's like a total point a yeah. pyramid and then I, I looked around and I was checking if it was anybody's and I, I put it on top of the board. But it wasn't like, a, you know, it closed up. It's like, you know what I mean? So his feet would go in and his, just his head would stick out, you know? Yeah, yeah. So we put, he got in there and we like, we pushed it even further and like, it was pretty fun. When we got, when we got to his house, I dropped him off and then uh, the next day I said, I'm going to bolt that down and put little hol handlebars on it and stuff. And so those are the city racers and that's how they came about. So. I, qu I quit school, you know, yeah. and then I turned pro and I started having, you know, like a, a lot of money. Yeah. And then this is where I kind of like got like this kind of, I still, you know, I don't know. I got like a habit of just spending crazy or whatever. It was a group of us. It was uh, the skateboarder, Chris Miller. He rode for Schmidt Sticks. Uh, the skateboarder, Mark Rogowski. Gator, you know, he is, of course. Uh, uh, Christian Osoi. They like had some of the guys go to like southern Japan and some guys go to northern. Okay. They broke us up. In fact, you know, uh, Lance Mountain did a collaboration with uh, with Supreme. Yeah. And he did like a Supreme logo and it's like kind of rainbow fade. Yeah, yeah. But the the logo that he did is the exact, uh, ex it's the exact way that the Japanese, uh, the first like uh, exporter of American skateboards and bringing the pros to Japan. Okay. That first company, like, he copied that. Like, that's what it is. I was really young when I went there for the first time, and uh, um, I remember being paid cash, you know, American money, yeah. not Japanese money. Wait, yeah, and I was looking at all the money, and it's like all these hundreds, and like, they're like, they're not phony, but like, even like real money, sometimes it's not, it's not right like or yeah. you know it's not perfect yeah so each one i noticed the same type of uh similarities to like x amount of ink or like a minus amount of time cooling or whatever they yeah. do their process to making the american money i was looking at it, i was like man is this fucking japanese dude giving me fake american <laughs> money <laughs> it's the it's mutual you know i like japan just yeah. probably just as much as they like me i've seen like martial artists that are like as balanced and as like athletic as skateboarders yeah. and if i pass them the board they'll go like <laughs> you know if they wanted to skateboard they could very easily yeah because their balance is all the same a lot of boxers too because boxing you have to like you know it's the it's same like type of well, it's your central balance, yeah. your central, you know, I don't know, like, yeah, you want to like, you're like this bobbing and weaving and yeah. your opponent is kind of doing the same, you know, and like yeah. when you do a handrail or, or a slide or like nose or you have to do the foot flicks, which are like probably like soccer, yeah. you know, a lot of soccer players skateboard, the foot flicks and then do the, <laughs> to the grind. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's ridiculous to think about it like that. Yeah, yesterday or the other day I was at the park and I was trying to do these tricks and I came down and one and it's just, yeah, it hurts sometimes some ways or some, I don't know. You have to stay strong though. I mean, there's, there's martial artists that are like as fit as skateboarders, you know? Yeah. I mean, right now I'm kind of like a little heavy. I've been eating a lot. I eat at night. I eat cats. <laughs>